Well, hello. <clears throat> I haven't done a vlog for my main channel in a really, really long time. And it's mainly because I can't be arsed to do it because I do a, a vlog for my patrons every single month. And vlogs are a ton of work and doing one a month has been, you know, more than enough in terms of like time and effort. <laughs> but I do miss doing it for my main channel. And right now, where I am, because I, if you may have noticed, I didn't post anything in November. The only thing I did in November was a patron vlog. And so I'm trying to get back into doing videos, but like the idea of sitting down and doing like a, a proper sit down, like put the lights on and put my makeup on and like sit down and talk books. Like I just cannot, I cannot. And even though a vlog is more work both to film and to edit, that seemed like less of a burdensome task to me because I guess because even though it's more work, it's sort of like integrated into your day. So the stuff that you're like, already doing you just like it takes longer to do each thing all day because you film it but you're not doing something that you wouldn't be doing I guess talking to the camera right now is something I wouldn't be doing so anyway I thought I'd do a festive holiday vlog um just cozy and reading and that's what a reading vlog is and also because I do owe you two months worth of wrap up and a TBR I thought I would just kind of like work those into the vlog um, the TBR is definitely easier and more straightforward. Um, the wrap-up is, um, well, I don't know if you can see from here. That stack is the wrap-up that I need to do. So, I don't even know if I'll do it all at once. <clears throat> Maybe I'll sit down and do half and then half again later. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I just carried over my TBR stack, which you should have seen when I sat down. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about those books. There's one book that I won't tell you about because it's a secret. Oh, also yesterday, when originally I thought maybe possibly I'd sit down and do proper videos. I don't know what it was, but there was something going on in the park that's like a block from me. Like, not just like a party, like an event. There was a Ferris wheel and like loud music that was getting louder and louder and louder as the evening went on to the point where like, I just went to my parents' house because I couldn't handle the noise. So I really wouldn't have been able to film anything anyway. So anyway, the my December TBR is, is pretty manageable. Um, I would like to think anyway. <laughs> so, so the first book that um, I just started reading this morning the jacket back on it is Murder at Holly House which I know nothing about except that I saw this on Waterstones and it arrived a little bit beat up which I'm pretty upset about but um with beautiful sprayed pages and it's like all I know is it's like a Christmas a British Christmas romance uh, romance what am I saying mystery murder mystery I like murder mysteries and I like Christmas and this is pretty so <laughs> that's all the thought that went into both the purchase and the choice to put it on my TBR but I'm looking forward to it then my patrons and I are continuing our uh, little read-along of the Hornblower books. Um, we are at Hornblower and the Hotspur, so we're going to read it in December and talk about it at the beginning of January. I'm very much looking forward to this. I've been really enjoying the Hornblower books. <clears throat> then I got this from Waterstones as well. Um, it doesn't have any sprayed pages, but it is signed by the author. Um, the Christmas Appeal, um, also like um, a Christmas mystery, but then my patrons were telling me that you like sh should or have to have read a non-Christmassy like other book that came first and that this is like a Christmassy follow-up to it to make sense of it and that also it's like more of like a puzzle than a book where um you're kind of like given the pieces and you kind of have to put it together I think I think it's something like that anyway it's more interactive in some in some capacity so I was like I don't like that. <laughs> I'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Well, so, so this, this, it's tiny anyway. Then the, my patrons and I, oh, I should move this up. Um, technically, this one won, but it was so close. It was like nearly a tie. And I was like, fine, we can do both. They're not long. So my patrons and I are reading together for our like official patron buddy read for the month of December. Shush up there. Big old truck. Right away. We are reading both The Wizard of Earth Sea and the Chris a, a Christmas Carol. I have read A Christmas Carol before, but I got this new edition of it. Um, I've never read The Wizard of Earth Sea. I've always meant to read the Earth Sea books. Um, so I got this cool edition of it, and then I also got a bind up that. Well, I bought like 
I went crazy. I bought all of the Earthsea books in these editions, but then I also bought a bind up, which I did not realize was a bind up of the same books that I had just purchased because uh, I think it's called The Books of Earthsea or something. Is it the name of the bind up? But in fairness to me, there is an installment called Tales of Earthsea that is also an individual book in this and is not a bind up. So how was I to know that Tales of Earthsea is an installment, but The Books of Earthsea is not an installment? So I own both now. The bind up is um, pretty unwieldy, so I will be reading the individual installments, but the bind up is nice. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. If for no other reason than that everyone else has read this, except for me, it feels like. And my dad's been recommending it for ages. It says it's illustrated. I see one illustration, which I mean is more than most books have, in fairness. I think this is the only illustration. Whereas, The Christmas Carol. This edition has so many illustrations. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we're going to read them and talk about them, um, for December. Then another Christmas Eve, a Christmas Eve book, The Winter Spirits. Do we need the, we crowing right now? Traumatizing my kitty? My patrons would know, I guess you wouldn't know, that there's an ongoing war betwixt mine kitty and the crows of the neighborhood. She had like a, a had it out with them. It was quite dramatic. Um, so tensions are high today. <laughs> yeah, in a previous vlog, I think in like early autumn or late summer or something, it was, it was quite intense. <laughs> Cats versus the crows. So anyway, a Christmas ebook, um, the, Ho the Winter Spirits, Ghostly Tales for Frosty Nights. This is an anthology of like spooky stories, which I love the old timey tradition of like telling ghost stories at Christmas. Um, cause I for spooky season. <laughs> um, so like the woman in black, which I love the woman in black in general. I do recommend that. Um, it's what I think the framing device for, I'm trying, cause I've seen the play of it as well. I've read the book and I've seen the play and I think it's in both the book and the play that the framing device for it is that someone is telling the story as a ghost story at Christmas. Any So this is ghost stories for Christmas. Um, I picked it up where it came on my radar because, um, I was looking for Bridget Collins books because I really enjoyed the two of hers. I think she has only published two, um, The Betrayals and The Binding. So then when I was searching for Bridget Collins, this came up because she's one of the contributing authors to it. And then also um, Karen Millwood Hargrave. Um, I've only read one book by her, but I liked it. And Natasha Pulley, who I've always meant to read, but I have, I have a bunch of her books, but I haven't read them. And Catriona Ward, who wrote The Last House on Needless Street, which, Needless Street, which I very much enjoyed. So I'm looking forward to this anthology, and at the very least, it is stunning. So it's pretty, if nothing else. And then last, and probably least, who knows, is my very last book of the month club book, because I canceled. <laughs> um, the Helsinki Affair by Anna Pitoniak. Um, one of my, I think my, actually, I hadn't thought of it until this moment. But this is a perfect way to end because the very first book that I ever got from Book of the Month Club was one of her books, was her first book, um, Necessary People. And it took me a million years to read it, which is why I hadn't really thought of this before. Because um, I was like, yeah, I'll read it. It was a thriller and I was like, I'm sure I'll, it's fine. And then like literally years later, I finally read Necessary People and was like, oh my gosh, this was so good. This was so much better than like a normal thriller. Like it like, I, it felt like it would kind of like, I was like, oh, I think I know where this is going to go. I know how thrillers go. And it didn't. Like it went in a quite different direction and I was so impressed with it. So um, I was like thinking of probably canceling Book of the Month Club by the end of the year. And um, this is the first time I've seen this author again. And I was like, oh, well, I'm picking that. And this is, um, I think it's a spy thriller. And yeah, first and last. That I actually like, I love the symmetry of that. Um, this feels like the universe is confirming my decision to cancel Book of the Month. I'm, I am looking forward to it though. So anyway, that and then one other book, which I can't tell you about. Well, I could, but I'm choosing not to because my patrons very kindly for December, for the vlog that I do for my patrons every single month, um, they, they, pick um, and vote on a book for me to read for that blog. So like, I don't choose when I'm reading for it. Um, but so on the poll and it won by a landslide <laughs> uh, for December was Leanna chooses something that she thinks that she will love. Um, so I've chosen something. I know what it's going to be. I'm pretty excited about it. I, I am not much better at choosing books for myself than other people are. 
I think there's a pretty good chance that I will like it. And I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm not, I haven't told my patrons what it is. It'll be a surprise uh, to everyone, I guess. Um, yeah, and then later today, we'll talk about that situation, which is October and November. Because a lot of November I spent just like reading all, like a bunch of books that I didn't manage to get through in October, plus a few more. Actually, there's a book missing from the top of that stack. There's that plus one more. So I did good. I did good. Still a few that I need to read, like Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd have a cozy day, read some Christmassy books. Um, I was thinking of making some festive food. I was thinking of making like a squash and sage risotto and maybe some... Uh, roasted broccolini and I have some blueberries this isn't festive I suppose but I was thinking of making like lemon blueberry muffins to use up the blueberries yeah yeah just hang out um, so yeah welcome and yeah <laughs>
Well, after that a lovely dinner, um, I think I'm finally ready to do my reading wrap up, or at least, well, we'll give it our best shot. <laughs> my massive, how many books is it? 26 books over two months, but still, I think that's not shabby. All right, let's get them. This is a terrible idea. Oh no. Why is there no help? Okay. Oh no! <laughs> Alright, well, they're a bit out of order now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, I'm definitely sure. Oh no. Oh no. We're gonna do our best. Cassie, no! Stop it! First book that I read in October, October was Fall of Hyperion, which is, hey, don't do that. Oh, which was, um, my patrons and I were, oh my God, be quiet. My patrons and I were ostensibly doing a read along of the Hyperion cantos. Um, I had read Hyperion and Fall of Hyperion before and I had not finished the cantos. So the plan was to reread the first two and then read the third and fourth ones, but I already didn't, <sighs> I already didn't like the first one as much as I remembered liking it, and then I really didn't like this very much the second time. I was like, I don't, I think I must have, like, rose-colored glasses been giving it the benefit of the doubt the first time, because I was like, God, this, this is not good. <laughs> um, anyway, so we decided collectively to not continue with that period cantos, and I shan't be finishing the cantos ever, I don't think, unless there's a very specific reason for me to. It definitely peaked at book one, and even book one I think is best on the first read. It's not so great on the reread. Then, possibly next. Oh god, these are definitely out of order. Okay, well, early in October, I know it was pretty early in October, I read Joyland by Stephen King. Um, I always try to read a King in October, at least a couple. And um, I will never read Carrie. I always put Carrie on my TBR and I never read Carrie. Um, so yeah, um, I was looking for books that would be like um, creepy carnival kind of vibe. Um, I read something Wicked This Way Comes already several years ago. Kathy, what the fuck is your problem? Huh? What do you want? What do you want? Look at this angel. Um, so I read, yeah, I read something Wicked This Way Comes, um, a few years ago, and... Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I just realized that I could use my TV as a light, and it's more effective than I expected. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's interesting. Um, you can't be the angel. Oh, you're so cute. Look at her. Would you like to tell us your reading wrap-up? What did you read, huh, baby? <laughs> so cute. As I was saying, I've already read something Wicked This Way Comes, so um, I was looking for other books with that vibe. <coughs> and there's a ton of haunted house books to be found. There's a ton of, I mean, uh, there's vampire books. There's, there's like a lot of other types of stuff. Creepy Carnival? Not so much. Um, so Joyland was like, one of like the two books that would come up. It would always be like something wicked this way comes and I was like, yeah, I've already read that. And then Joyland. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll read Joyland. And it's not really creepy carnival, but it was really good. I did really, really enjoy this. Um, and I even cried, which I think I might have cried a little bit reading Pet Cemetery, but I don't really cry or I don't expect to cry reading Stephen King. So yeah, definitely among my new, not like my favorite King that I've read, but like at the top, very solid. Definitely, definitely, really, really enjoyed it. Would recommend. Then um, I DNF'd <laughs> The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger. Um, legitimately, because, I mean, I wasn't loving it. I wasn't like super into it or anything. Um, but in the oodles of like, let's paint the scene and give you like details about these people to flesh out the portrait of humanity. Look at me being an author. Um, what was the line? It was some line 
about how strong this lady made her coffee and how, um, like, the specific counterpoint is that, like, n how no, um, it was, like, how no Scandinavian or how no Swede would ever make their coffee. You know, she made it good and strong. And I was like, tell me you know nothing about Scandinavia without telling me. Because they love coffee. Like, they drink more and darker and blacker and stronger coffee than anyone in the world world. So if you're telling me that, oh, this lady made strong ass coffee, not like the weak ass Swedish coffee, like, I don't Of all things to be, to use as an example, I just, what? <laughs> and so after that, I don't know, I just felt like I couldn't trust anything the author said. I was like, I happen to know that, but there's things that I don't know. And if you're like saying stuff, like making assertions, I don't trust any of them now, and I'm very annoyed, and I already wasn't loving this. So I was, I kept reading it after that, but it just kept bothering me, and I kept, it made me question every single thing that he said, and I was like, I can't read this. I, I can't. I can't. I cannot forgive the Scandinavian coffee debacle. So I do not it. <laughs> then I, I'm pretty sure I read this first and then this, but they fell down. Um... I also don't think I read them next or back to back, but I might have done. I don't know. So obviously these are all book of the month club books. Um, I read Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin, um, which is a de debut. And I read None of This is True by Lisa Jewell, which is definitely not a debut. And it's not my first Lisa Jewell. Um, this one, I thought at first that I was not going to like it. And I thought that I was like, oh, this is a debut. And it seems like it. Like it feels like it. Like she doesn't know what she's doing. This is a thriller that's like not very thrilling and it's kind of cliche and it's gonna like do really predictable and stupid things. And by no means is this a perfect thriller, but it actually did surprise me quite a bit. And it went places that I was not expecting at first. Like it seems very cookie cutter to begin with, but it takes some turns that are unexpected and the ending for it is not what you think it's going to be. Cause I was pretty sure I knew what it was gonna be. And I was annoyed one that I knew and two at what it was. Cause I was like, are we doing this? We're not doing this. So I think this is actually quite good. And I would definitely read another thriller by this author since this was their, their debut. Um, yeah, I pretty, pretty good. And then none of this is true. This is, I think my second Lisa Jewel. I think the only other Lisa Jewel book I've read is um, The Family Upstairs, which was not really what I expected it to be. I did enjoy it. None of this is true. Also fantastic. I think this is better than the other one that I read by her. Um, this was really, really, really good. I really liked this. It kept my attention and it kept make, like twisting and turning in ways that I did not expect, but I didn't feel like clumsy and gimmicky. I've read quite a few thrillers where like it feels like every, feels like every chapter ends on a cliffhanger just for the sake of it um, and gets ridiculous. This, like, certainly, like, was uh, somewhat unlikely in some of the things that happened. But I still thought that, like, it kept me guessing and it kept turning in ways that, like, weren't reliant on the characters being idiots or me being an idiot. And even though, like, the book tells you that it's unreliable, like, that's literally the title, um, it's still quite surprising. So... I would definitely recommend this. Then I don't think I read this next, but it's next in the stack. Um, my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them, which I did. I feel like I was going to say something about the vlog, but I don't. Well, I, whatever it was, it must not have been very important. But anyway, I vlogged Children of Gods and Fighting Men by Shauna Lawless, and um, I did not like it. <laughs> I did not hate it. It's not the worst thing my patrons have ever made me read but it was not a win for me. In fairness, I was just getting over COVID um, when I read this and I vlogged it. Um, so I don't know that that helped it, but I don't think it really changed much. Like, I I don't think it's that well written. I think it's quite um, cliche and cookie cutter and shallow and borderline offensively shallow. And it's like kind of reliance on stereotype. Maybe not even stereotype, archetype perhaps is what I mean to say. Yeah, this was just, I mean, I wasn't particularly interested in picking it up when it came out, even though you, it seems like the type of thing that'd be a me book, but I was like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I did not like it and I will not be reading the words of kings and prophets, so 
alas. And for the year of Gaiman, I did reread the graveyard book so that I could do my video. And I'm very behind on the year of Gaiman and the year of Gaiman shan't be concluded at the end of this year. <laughs> but I did reread graveyard book and super duper enjoyed it and did get my video done. Then the book that I picked up when I was in Nashville um, with Mara and Jess and Kaz, what the actual fuck? Why? Uh, Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. Um, the audiobook is how I listened to, or how I consumed this. Kaz, do you want to get sprayed? Yeah, I'm talking to you. The audiobook is read by Neil Patrick Harris and someone else. And Neil Patrick Harris's narration was quite enjoyable. The other narrator was was decent, but also the problem is that Neil Patrick Harris is part of it is when the narrative is in first person. So he's reading it like he is the character um, speaking in first person. And then the other narrator is reading in third person and would have, like, would say things like that are supposed to be the dialogue of Neil Patrick Harris's character. And I guess they never spoke to each other or never heard each other how they were going to do it. Because when he would do the dialogue that was meant to be Neil Patrick Harris's character, it sounded nothing like him. I don't expect him to do, like, an impression of Neil Patrick Harris, but, like, different accent, different intonation, different tone and vibe and personality even. Um which really kind of made it confusing. And then the story itself, I think it was an interesting premise, but I think the author didn't quite know what to do with it. So it started much more interestingly than it ended. By the end, I was kind of sick of it. Um, and it wasn't doing anything that terribly interesting with its premise. It was like, I wasn't mad I read it. It was fun, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't want to reread it. And for being such a pretty book, it did not live up to its cover. And then another D uh, book of the month club that I DNF'd was Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Not even because of anything the book did. I just, I don't know how I completely missed that this book is about Ted Bundy. Like from the perspective of his victims. Um, and I just don't want to read about that. <laughs> I knew it was like true crime, like thriller, but I don't know how I missed that it's about Ted Bundy. <laughs> Um, so I just, as soon as I realized that, I was like not very far into it when I realized that. I was like, oh, I, nope, no, I'm good. No, thank you. So I, it might be a fantastic book. Um, I just don't want to read it. And then the Blades and Bodice Rippers book was The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. We all dressed up as usual. And the live show was on Bethany's channel. We all dressed up like dolls. Um, it was, yeah, all, I was gonna say, I think... The prompt was to dress like toys, but I think we all dress like dolls, um, which was fun. I enjoyed the book. Um, I was not the one that hated it this time, so that's that's always refreshing. And then I read, this is not what I read next, by no means. I think I might have read this next. The books that Mara chose for me to read, I've read all of them. Um, so I'm not going to talk about them really here, because she and I are going to talk about... Oh, yeah, I realized that I, you probably don't know what books I picked for Mara. Um, so I talked in my TBR about the books that she picked for me, um, and I didn't have the books with me when we visited Nashville. So you would have seen these books in her video, because she gave them to me, and in my TBR. But she doesn't do TBR videos, and I didn't have them then. So I don't think anyone knows <laughs> what books I chose for Mara. So in anticipation of us chatting about them when she's done with them, the books that I chose for Mara, FYI, are Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Project, um, for obvious reasons. Um, and The Mary Shelley Club by uh, Goldie Moldovsky, I think is the name of the author. Um, the Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.G. Perry. And um, The Paper Menagerie by, by Ken Liu. And yeah, I don't know how she's doing with them. I don't know if she started or finished them. Those are the four books that I picked for her that we will discuss soon. <laughs> anyway, um, the first of the books that she gave to me to read that I finished was The Traveling Cat Chronicles. So we will talk about them soon. Um, then my patrons and I, Buddy read and, and had a live chat talking about The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in October. I never read this before, so it was very, um, I don't know, ed edifying? perhaps is the word? I don't know. Just it's something that people talk about so much that if, even if you haven't read it, you know what this story is. Um, so it was interesting to read the the original to actually read the story that I feel like I already knew. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um, I did not read this next, but we'll talk about it next. Um, I read Horseman by Christina Henry, um, which is a retelling of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. 
Um, I've only read one other Christina Henry book. I've always meant to read more, um, but I love Lost Boy by Christina Henry, which I read a few years ago. Um, and my friend was like, oh, well, I, it was, she also likes Lost Boy, and she's like, I just read Horseman, and, and it was really good. So I picked it up on her say-so, no pressure. And I didn't really care for it. Like, I didn't hate it, but I thought it was pretty silly, and didn't really know what it was trying to do in terms of, re like, why, it, why it's retelling this, this story. Like, what it's trying to, to do about that, or change about that, or comment on, or be in conversation with. I just, it was very silly to me, and, like, very, um, not quite self-aggrandizing, but a little bit maybe that? I don't know. The tone of it was so strange to me, and I honestly, like, the way that it, um, the changes that it makes to the original, I mean, it makes a ton of changes, but I mean, some of the changes it makes to the core characters, not just that, like, it expands the story or extends the story. I mean, like, changes it makes to kind of, like, who you kind of, um, how you feel about the the main characters in it. Um, I just, I, I don't know why, and I don't, I didn't like it, and I think I gave it three stars. I just, this was not it, at least not for me. And I'm not even, like, a mega fan of the original story, but I definitely prefer Washington Irving's story to this. And then my patrons and I are reading the Hornblower books, which I mentioned in my GBR, so in October, not November, because we're doing one every other month. So for October, we read Lieutenant Hornblower, or as the British would have it, Lieutenant Hornblower, and had our chat talking about it. And then November, no Hornblower. And then December, which we're currently in, another Hornblower. So, um, yeah, I don't have, like, too much to say about the individual installments. I just, like... I really enjoy the adaptations, and I'm enjoying the books, and it's just a good time. <laughs> Another Mara book, um, the A Morbid Taste for Bones by Ellis Peters, which is the first Cadfell mystery. Um, so I shan't be saying lips are sealed. What I think of it, you'll have to wait till me and Mara discuss it. The, I definitely did not read that next. Oh, maybe I read this next. The Witcher read along in in October. So I must have read this in October. Um, we finished the books. We, we finished Season of Storms, uh, which is the last of the books, um, and chatted about it on Time to Speak podcast. And then in November, what we talked about was the show, Season 3, because um, I hadn't seen it, so I had to hurry up and watch it so we could talk about it. Um, but yeah, Season of Storms, not my favorite Witcher book. It There were some enjoyable things about it, but definitely kind of a letdown after you finish the series. And I definitely think you have to read it after finishing the series, because it would be kind of spoilery for the series. But yeah, I Bethany liked this a lot better than I did. Um, I definitely feel like it depends on what it is. Like, I think people who don't really like the Witcher series that much would probably like Season of Storms better. But if you like the Witcher series, you probably won't like Season of Storms. So it wasn't bad, but definitely not my favorite. And at, at some point, I read another Mara book. Um, the slaved uh, uh just just slave to sensation by nalini singh the first in the side changeling series and i am not gonna tell you what i think about this then I, maybe after that but whatever <laughs> at some point i read how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix and grady hendrix is three for three this is possibly my favorite of the grady hendrix books that i've read i've read um the vampire Southern, Southern book club's guide to slaying vampires and the ikea one horror store uh, and now how to sell a haunted house and partly why this one worked so so well for me is that like the kind of like central characters slash driving conflict like slash main relationship in the in the book is between a brother and a sister and by no means do I want to say that my relationship with my brother is like this but there are parts of it that like they're much worse in the book than what me and my brother have ever gone through but, like, I feel like if anyone's ever had, like, a brother-sister relationship that, like, has some issues, like, this is, like, way worse and way more exaggerated and way more intense and she's worse and he's worse and my brother and I are much chiller than this. But nonetheless, like, it resonated with me because of that um, and in, in good ways and in bad ways. And then the haunting itself I thought was more interesting. Like usually when I read these types of stories where there's kind of a supernatural element, I tend to find them very silly or I feel like by the time I get to the end, the author was like, well, I wanted to do this story, but I didn't really know like what the reason for it would be. So I kind of had to like come up with something at the end. Like they usually feel kind of like cobbled together. 
but this felt like thematically thought through um and yeah I really enjoyed this I really like Grady Hendrix so I guess I will continue reading Grady Hendrix the last Mara book which did I read it last I think I did finish this last so at least those were in order um Barrow of Winter by H.M. Long and I shan't be telling you what I think of this all right home stretch no that's not true there's oh god there's stacks everywhere okay um, I read Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments by T.L. Huchu, which is the sequel to The Library of the Dead. I really liked The Library of the Dead. I didn't love it, but I really liked it, and I was looking forward to, like, reading the series, but I really did not like Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments. So unless I hear that book three is, like, really amazing and that book two was, like, a massive dip, but we came back, like, I'm done with the series. The first one was charming while imperfect and not not spectacular but like a good time and the second one is not <laughs> a good time so I don't know what happened it feels like a different person wrote this I do not recommend if you even if you liked the first I mean I guess I still recommend the first one because it was a good time but don't read the second one <laughs> then uh nope this was next yes yes um I, the book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them in November was um the parable of the sower by octavia butler and octavia butler is three for three um i've read fledgling kindred and now parable of the sower which i had originally intended to be my first octavia butler and now i'm only now reading it i really enjoyed it i don't know which is my favorite octavia butler of the three that i've read i like them all though so yeah anyway um, like I said, I read this and vlogged it for my patrons, and I, unlike Children of Gods of Fighting Men, this, this was good. And then I read The Unmaking of June Pharaoh by Adrian Young, and this was awful. Worst Adrian Young book yet, and I don't know why I keep reading her, I mean, I do know why I keep reading her books, is because the premise always sounds like something I would be interested in, and then the execution is always so painfully lackluster. But this one, in addition to being lackluster, and it was very lackluster, it was also very weird in what it's some of its choices and then the author's note at the end just kind of like made it worse <laughs> um so no i give this one star and i think i'm finally done with adrian young i don't care how enticing the premise of her next book sounds i shan't be reading it i no enough <laughs> then um i read mr mercedes by stephen king because i got all the mr mercedes books that's just because I want to read his new one, Holly. Um, and then people were like, uh-oh, you're not going to like those. It's too bad you bought them all. And I was like, well, I really liked this. I really, really liked this. Again, one of my, not my all-time favorite, but one of a better Stephen King than one of the better ones. Like, I definitely enjoyed this more than Salem's Lot. I enjoyed this more than The Shining. Um... I enjoyed this more than other books, presumably. I don't remember what I've read. Um, yeah, this was really, really good. And I'm very happy to read the next two books. Um, yeah. I don't. Why did people think I wouldn't like this? I don't understand. I also now know why the next book, or the, or the book that I was reading this for, is called Holly. Um, so, so when that came out, I was like, Holly! <laughs> um, yeah, this was really good. Really, really good. Um, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> then I read Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz, and this was fine. It, it was nothing to write home about. The mystery was like, okay. I guessed a lot of it well before it was revealed. Um, so it, I, maybe I'm too old for it. Maybe if I was like in middle school or high school, I would like this better. It was fine. It wasn't bad. It was better than My Lady of Mysterious Ailments. Definitely better than June Vero. But it was, it was pretty forgettable, if I'm honest. Then, one of my new favorite books. Ah! I, well, I, the one that I read was this copy from Book of the Month, Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. Which I almost didn't choose, but someone was like, I'm reading this one right now and it's really good. And I saw it on Book of the Month and I was like, oh, I'll get that too. Um, and then I will be probably getting rid of this because I bought now the Barnes and Noble special edition of it. But this is the copy I read. Um, and I read it physically because I tried the audiobook and I did not like the narrator. So I was like, nope. Um, this book is Raven Cycle for adults. 
for grown-ups. If you like The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater, then you have to read The Star uh, Starling House because the writing itself, the vibe of the story, the also like the actual story itself, like what it's about and the kind of magical realism of it. I mean, I guess it's straight up magic. It's not even magical realism, but it's more like magical realism, which is also how Raven Cycle is. Um, the like highly metaphorical language mixed with like kind of crass, maybe not crass humor, but I don't know. There's an edginess to the writing and to the humor in both Maggie Stiefvater and in this. Um, I really loved this. I like devoured it. Um, yes, very, very, very much like this book. The writing is stunning. The story was impactful and creative and, and immersive. And, and this made me remember that I do actually like reading and I do actually like books. <laughs> and then last but least also um, is The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams, which my patrons and I buddy read. And none of us were terribly impressed, which is a shame because I have these gorgeous editions from The Broken Binding. And I probably am not going to read books two and three, but so it goes. <sighs> All right, we did it. And now I can finally put this stack away. And yeah, watch some TV, read a book, go to bed. I think I'll probably end the vlog here though because I'm pretty tired and I have nothing further to say. <laughs> but let me know if this video was fun, like if I should do this again. I kind of liked it, um, doing it this way. And I'm happy to vlog again in December. Cook some things and snuggle up with a book and get cute footage of cats. I don't know. I like vlogging a lot. It's just a lot of work. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's all from me, and, uh, I think I used to have an outro, but it's been, like, three years since I ever did a video, so, <laughs> I don't know, see you around, happy holidays, <laughs> bye! <laughs>